Hey friends, I'm Pastor Jack Mantrick, pastor at Central United Methodist Church. We are, as of today, one week into Lent. Ash Wednesday was a week ago. Uh, it was uh, horrific weather. We, we had uh, ashes in the morning. We, we have ashes and coffee, kind of a drive-by ashes type of deal. People can get a cup of coffee. They can uh, uh, start their day with uh, their ashes as a sign of their repentance and uh, willingness to enter into a holy Lent. So we... Um, we did that, but then by, uh, I think by about two o'clock, uh, we called off our evening uh, worship service because the weather was getting very, very bad. And it was, uh, and still remains uh, a challenge for us. There are people in our area here in the Detroit metropolitan area that uh, are still without power. Uh, friends, we today are going to talk a little bit about uh, scripture and how we approach scripture. And this comes from a, an idea that uh, we read yesterday, uh, the scripture in which Jesus proclaimed that the fulfilling of uh, scripture um, is being fulfilled in their sight that very day. So let's, let's read it. It's from Luke. It's the fourth chapter. It's uh, ch uh, verses 14 to 21. And Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through all the surrounding district. And he began teaching in their synagogues and was by all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and was, as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and he opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to preach the gospel of the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of that holy word. You know, in, in, uh, in the Jesus' day and, and, and today, there's this whole... Um, uh, majesty of reading the scriptures. It's a wonderful thing. They open up the, uh, uh, the Aaron Kadesh, which is the, the uh, kind of the closet, the, uh, uh, the tabernacle, we, we call it, uh, where they keep the scrolls, the holy scrolls of the temple or the synagogue there. And, um, and they parade it around. Uh, I attended one uh, small uh, synagogue where um, they actually dance and they parade around with the scroll and uh, everybody gets up and they're clapping, they're singing. It's, it's very, very lively worship. It's really wonderful. It was a great uh, experience. And then they read the scripture. Well, in Jesus' day, they would have, you know, with great humility, they would have taken out the scroll. The scroll would be covered with a cloth, uh, which they call it a mantle. A uh, mantle is something that prophets would wear around their shoulders. It's kind of a sign that they are mantles, like a stole that pastors wear today, but a sign that they are a prophet of the people. So it would be clothed in this cloth. It would be protective, keep the dust from it and the uh, elements. And then it would have, uh, on the top, it would have these crowns on the ends of the scrolls that would uh, look like little crowns. And they were, they were called tag or tagen for plural. Uh, often there'd be two of them on the, the scroll ends. And then there would be a breastplate on it too, which would be... Um, you know, protective, uh, you know, God's protection and, and God's uh, providence and, uh, and will for the will of God to, to live on and be protected. So there was this really great ritual of undressing the scroll, placing it down. You didn't dare touch it. They had pointers, uh, uh, and still to this day, and uh, Yad, they're called, and they would follow along the scripture because no one could touch the word of God. There was this whole reverence about it. You know, in our worship services today, um, the reverence for our scriptures may not be so obvious. I mean, I think about what we'd say when we're done. We, 
we've uh, adopted sort of a new uh, scriptural response uh, since I think since Lent of last year, you know, for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. And the congregation uh, responds, thanks be to God. And it's this whole idea that this is an important thing, that, that God's word is preeminent in our faith, in our community. It shapes us. It gives to us a sense of, of who we are. It gives to us an, an identity. And I often wonder, what do people think about our scriptures? How much authority do we give to our scriptures? Obviously, Jesus gave a lot of authority to it because he is saying in his brief little <laughs> sermon, we might say today, <laughs> this scripture is being fulfilled in your hearing. And Jesus later in, um, Jesus later in uh, Luke, Luke 24, uh, verse 44, says, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything uh, written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So Jesus is saying there are clues to who I am found in the, the prophets and uh, uh, in the law of Moses, the first four books of, of the Bible, what we call the Torah uh, or the Pentateuch, and, and uh, then the Psalms. And as we've started this new series of messages of Jesus and the Psalms, we're searching for how Jesus is the fulfillment of this idea of what we're anticipating uh, in Jesus, uh, the Messiah who will lead us, the Christ uh, who will uh, give his life for us. Uh, by the way, Messiah and Christ are the same words in different languages. So uh, just so you know, in Hebrew and Greek. And, uh, and that Jesus is the fulfillment of that, of that prophecy. And Jesus understood that. He proclaimed it. And so we have this awe that when we come to the end of our reading of Scripture in our service, when we say the Word of God uh, in Scripture, the Word of God among us, the Word of God uh, within us, the Word of God, Word, is uh, the living word of God taken from the first chapter of John saying that Jesus is the word. He is the living word of God. He is the, the incarnation of all that God is in a human form. And so as Jesus grew up and developed into his understanding of the scriptures, he certainly would have been taught them in his home and in the synagogue where he attended. He uh, began to understand who he was. And that day, that, that fateful day, he stood before his hometown um, synagogue and said, this is happening. This is fulfilled in, in who I am. As he began to teach, as we already know, he was already teaching and was praised by all. We wonder how later he came to die on a cross, but that's a whole other uh, series of uh, devotions, which will be on down the line as we get closer to Easter. But the point is, Jesus knew who he was. He was the Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah of the Hebrew people. He is our Christ. Let's pray. Gracious God, we do thank you for your word. Both the written word of Scripture and the, uh, our Old and New Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, the Greek New Testament, and the word that is Jesus. We ask that our relationship with Christ become full and deep during this season of Lent. We ask that your peace be among us and that we, are, that we would be able to be the people that you created us to be, to be the church that you've created us to be, so that we may, as we like to say in our mission statement, change our world with the love of Christ. May it ever be so, in his name and through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, friends. Have a great Wednesday, and God bless you.